just got to be spontaneous. Spontaneous? After all this work, now we have to be spontaneous? <laughs> now act. You have to act natural, like there's not lights and cameras and mics in your face and makeup on. Because act like we're hanging out in the kitchen with my nice knife on the table for no reason. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting us here today. My name is Barbara White. I was born Barbie Billy. I'm a descendant of the Pentlatch people on my father's side and descendant of the Quatlin people on my mother's side who was adopted from the residential school orphanage at five years old into the Satlu territory in Deep Bay where my grandmother lived and where I was born in uh, Chief Ernie Hardy's sister's house. I was delivered there in our Satlu territory. And Satlu territory is inclusive with the Pentlatch territory and it includes Denman and Hornby and Deep Bay area. So I'd like to welcome you all to the Pentlatch territory. All my relations. Um, I like asking people if they know what I said. That's my favorite thing. Do you know what I said? And then I ask them, do you know why you don't know what I said? I think, but we live here. And we don't know what I said. Let me see. You know what? What I actually said isn't all that accurate anyway, because it's not about who I am, it's about where I'm from. And the elders, you, you really like chastising me about that, because what I actually told you was that um, I am Jared Williams, I am the elders I'm chef, and I am a traditional foods um, warrior, I guess would be the rough translation, but that's not really what I mean, but that is the translation I can give you. Um, but like we just um, witnessed here, the proper way to introduce yourself is to go all the way to um, the top of your tree. And so um, the name I have, Kwa Stenachan, has roots in um, Nanaimo, and I can um, trace the name to um, pre-colonization. Uh, my um, grandmother's um, my grandfather um, bore the name, and he lived from um, the 1850s to the 1890s. And so my um, grandmother is Kwas um, Donalwit from Nanaimo, um, a territory on the river. And my, uh, my grandfather is, uh, he didn't have a traditional name, it was robbed from him um, because we wore traditional names when we went to the residential system, it would be worse. So he was not handed one because they wanted to help him so he wasn't, uh, um, he wouldn't be hurt. His name was Earl Williams and he's from the Samana um, Reservation in Couchin, but he has roots to um, the Underwoods in I'm Saanich, and so pretty much from Nanaimo to Saanich, I'm related to all the families. We're all one really big family. And in yesteryear, I hear actually that that really big family used to reach all the way up here. That the um, Salish um, tribes ran from um, Comox to the Yakima River, and we were all um, one big family. Yes, I've heard stories about that as well. And my grandfather, my father's father, was the existing chief of the Pentlatch people when he was killed in a logging accident in his uh, mid-40s. And at that time, his four sons were in residential school. <clears throat> and they weren't giving their, their native names either and lost the language for protection f from uh, being um, um, confined, put in confinement again. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandfather's name, when the Indian agent came in and put us and colonized us and put it on, the, on us on the reserves, my grandfather's name was William Williams. And uh, he's connected to the Coast Salish people. And we haven't been able to, to um, look into his family tree because it's been cut off. It's not existing in our, in our uh, area because of the name change and the cutoff from our family and his name was changed to Willie Billy. <clears throat> so that's how my father became a Billy. Mm. Yeah, um, you ask people, you know, in this new world, you say, oh, you know, like, who are you? And they say, oh, I am, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
elders got so mad at me when I was young and I used to be, oh, I'm Jared. Ah, Shah, it doesn't matter who you are. Where are you from? And he'd say, oh, this is, you know, my mom's name and you know my dad's name. Ah, higher up. And he'd go up, this is their mom and dad's name. Oh, that's who you are. And then they go, well, this person is actually with this person and that person and you're my nephew or you're my auntie. And you're like, oh, hi, auntie. <laughs> 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 Happens all the time, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and these are some of the beautiful things that we get from our territory. Our territory is known as a land of plenty, the, the Comox Valley, and um, that's how I learned to uh, eat and cook our traditional foods and harvest our traditional foods was from my, from my elders, my grandmother and my grandfather, and uh, who passed it on to my mother and father. And uh, that's how we used to live when I was younger, as we lived off the land and the ocean. I like your version of it probably more than mine. <laughs> um, I guess in our way, I was always told that you're to hand your um, first um, child over to your parents. And so that's what happened to me half time anyway. There was no asking if I wanted to help or, oh, what do you want to do today, grandson? It was, come on, we got to go do fish. Look at all that outside, all that fish. We got to <laughs> do it right now. And so I can remember being young and having to rip up ferns to have them all down, to chop up fish. I didn't actually have a chance to chop yet. I was, I was um, young enough, I wasn't allowed to use a knife, but I think probably by the age of like seven, you know, they're like, okay, you know, here's a knife, you gotta go chop some fish. And so it was just what we did, right? It was almost weird when I went to friends' houses that were non-Aboriginal and they didn't have wild food. There was, you know, like, there like was no octopus, there was no, um, salmon, they would eat chicken. And you'd be like, oh, chicken, where'd you get that? Oh, down at the grocery store. Oh, we don't go to the grocery store. And, you know, when I was a kid, I thought I didn't have anything. I didn't really feel rich. But now that I look back, I think we were the ones who were rich. We didn't have to rely on anything. We could just walk to the river and be like, boom, boom, out of fish. And, you know, there you go, you can eat that, so. Well, I had the pleasure of growing up on the fish boat. And that's where uh, my father and mom took us to keep us away from getting scooped for residential school. Yeah. We used to travel on the fish boat from March until November back in the day and fish that whole time. The uh, boat was about 42 feet long and the way we lived and ate was off the ocean and we would pick um, huckleberries and soap berries off of the boat that were hanging off of the walls of, oh. the, of the rocks that wow. we were when we were going through passages. That's how we got to have our dessert. So we always had fresh food in that way. Wow, yeah. We, would, we used to have to go down the river. We used to get all of ours of the river. And one thing that is, um, I think, unique to river salmon is slime. <laughs> yes. There is quite a lot of slime on our fish after we yanked them on the river for um, one or two days. We um, would butterfly them mm -hmm. and then um, assault them, but then you had to try to hang them up in the rafters of your um, smokehouse, but they would drip all this nastiness all over you. So you'd be like, whoop up with your really long stick, putting it up in the rafters, and it would just be all over you, because you'd have to do you know, like 200 up in the rafters and they'd all just be like dripping. Mm -hmm. And because I was young, that was my job. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, there you go, son, go on. <laughs> Gotta go hang up fish. Oh, okay, grandma. And then you're in there and you're like, oh, this is why they give this job to me <laughs> all over your hair and your face. But, it, it, you know, it's almost like the food was real. Like we like knew, you know, like where it was from and exactly how it was handled and all that stuff. Whereas now you're like, what is this? Where is it from? And they go, um, uh, um, you know, I don't know, the ocean? No. <laughs> Where an ocean? Ocean's a big place, right? So when's the last time you had um, some of this? I haven't had salmon strips like that for a long time because uh, the salmon that we're getting now uh, from the ocean aren't as big. No. So that when we take, when we fillet the fish, yeah. We don't have to take the strips off to make it thinner yeah, for smoking. That's right. That's right. In order to hang it. Yes, and to yeah. hang it, and to have it smoke evenly. Yeah, you know, I'm a cheater. I just use, you know, like the whole of it. Um, you know, like in order to make these, because all the elders are like, "Yay, jerky strips!" 
So you put it in the smokehouse for four days and, and keep the fire going mm -hmm. all through the night as well? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a big um, job. Yeah, I don't think everybody realizes that you really have to check it every one hour, every you know one and a half hours, go there and look again. Um, but yeah, I know that's even in you know the middle of the night you're out there checking yeah. it. Yeah, that's where it's nice to have the family sharing in the efforts because yeah. we used to take shifts and somebody would look <clears throat> after the smokehouse during the day and somebody would look after it at night and yeah. take turns. Actually, we used to have like a one-legged seat. <laughs> you know, so if you happen to nod off, you would actually like nod right off the seat. Yes, because my grandson says, what about the electric one that you can buy out of the store and e then you don't have to get up and do the fire all e night? The little chief? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen those little chief smoking. It's just, you know, like not the same. No, it's not the not same. Not the same. No, not the same flavor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jared, for bringing in this smoked salmon. Yeah, absolutely. It's delicious. I guess I could say that uh, I've been working with uh, um, First Nations Health to get our um, traditional ways to be recorded as actually food safe because there is um, nothing wrong with um, the technique. It's just that it's new mm -hmm. and they haven't ever really looked at it to check how we look after things. And so I've now done... Um, six samples and um, this type of salmon is what they call um, shelf stable so they don't have to be refrigerated mm -hmm. which is why we used to do it. Well we never had refrigerators back in the day so yeah that was how we preserved our foods. Absolutely <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see you brought along some oh uh, <laughs> some, mush. some gal. Yeah. Oh, that's your word for it. R Roe and kelp. Oh, yeah. Here, let's yeah, herring, roe, and kelp. Yeah. Are they, is First Nations Health Authority looking at this as well? Well, we've been working on it. It's, it's one of those examples of where in the regular world, there are rules and regulations about what you can use in restaurants or, or um, large gatherings. <clears throat> and one of those is that they have to be um, a commercially bought or uh, commercially licensed, yet there is no one who sells this because it's not a high demand in the Western world. So when I have to try to do things for like a traditional feast or whatever, I'm not allowed to use this, which I think is crazy. We've been using this here for um, thousands of years and I'm allowed to use a chicken that's only lived here for a hundred years but I'm not allowed to use this that was here for 10,000 years. There's no f um, flavor that is um, the same as these. One thing that's hard for a lot of people to realize is that we didn't have any sugar and so now our youth you know like who are used to using European foods aren't used to these old foods. And so it's, uh, it's really like changing the way that we eat. Mm -hmm. And our taste buds are changing that way, and our children's taste buds have changed dramatically because it's in the beginning of your years yeah. of, of, uh, that you start tasting the different foods that you're able to adapt to, so to speak. You know, one thing that's always really jumped out at me is how our foods are changing um, so fast that it's almost like we don't even really know what like we used to eat anymore. A lot of our youth, you know, they don't, um, they don't really have the opportunity to eat this stuff. You know, like when I had a, my young child, all the others would say, oh, this is all you need. You just gotta hand this to them and they'll just, you know, cause they don't have anything to all the way eat yet. They just be all the way like chewing on it. And I laughed, okay, Andy, sure, gotta give him some fish. So when I had one son, he ate that all the time when he was young. And holy man, he's always, Dad, oh, you know, like, I want to eat some eggs. Oh, Dad, um, you know, like, I want to eat some fish eggs. I want to eat some of this. I want to eat some of that. Well, my next son, I don't know, probably because I was rushing around all the time, we didn't really do that. And he doesn't eat any of our foods. I'm always like, hey, bud, you want some of this? Oh, no, no, I don't like eggs. I don't, no, no, I don't like this, Dad. And you think, well, maybe there was um, something to that. Those are uh, regular things to us, but to the rest of the world, it's very, very strange. And we're not even allowed to share, so I don't even know how to change that, really, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and just all these changes. And just that when we harvest, we're always raised to harvest with those 
you know, happy feelings. If you're, if you're, uh -huh. you know, not happy, you would be left at home. You know, ah, shut You know, like I don't want you to be with us. Then you'd be mad. And now, do we know who actually harvested our food, or were they happy, or was everything, you know, the right way? And then um, the elders um, I wonder if that's one of the reasons why we're like winding up with all these um, diseases and disorders is that there's no there's not as much love in the food when you're harvesting it um, for a job and not just um, for your own family, I guess. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Oh, sha uh, schwesem. Want to look at the schwesem? That's our word for it. But you have you you really have to use it the right way because if you use it the wrong way, you're using a nasty word in our language. So it's schwesem. Make sure you get the s and the ch in there. Schwesem. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, you uh, you were referencing that you used to just um, wild harvest them off the edge of the rocks on the islands. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I've been all over the island and I haven't actually seen it. So that is really, really neat because, you know, like I have to trade to the interior to get it. So now I have to ask you, like, where did we get it? Where did we get there it? used to be lots on Hornby Island with all the rocks that they have here. Yeah. I'm wondering if we can replace Oh. Try replacing it in, yeah. in a few spots to see if it'll grow Pretty back. Cool. I yeah, think it yeah. was. I think we've lost it because of um, uh, um, development. Development. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, Jared, we're very lucky to be here in Hornby again. Yeah, coming all the way up here. Yeah, it's great. Yes, it's wonderful to have you here doing oh, your yeah, cooking and yeah. your, of our traditional foods for all of the community to taste. I'm just allowed to use all our food, so I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> and, you know, like the realization that our um, nutritional world, you know, used to like run up here. This is, you know, like this is, um, you know, all of our home. And that it really needs to be revitalized and to like remind, you know, those who who live here now, where they live. So I'm just really, really happy to have um, that opportunity. Because mm -hmm. so a lot yeah. of these things that we're cooking used to be right here on the shores of Hornby yeah. Island. Yeah, yeah, still there. And um, thank you for the Hornby Island residents for supporting us the way that they yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and keeping on wanting to ask us back to do it again. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hey, that's right. Hey, hey, oh, shahitapka, yep, yeah, yeah, hi, tapka. Oh.